Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. So x is between negative 1 and 1. We have the sum 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared plus 5x to the third power, so on and so forth. And we're going to evaluate the sum in terms of x. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. First of all, let me go ahead and kind of express this sum in a you know, more explicit form. So basically using sigma, we can express the sum as n equals 1 through infinity of n plus 1, which gives us 2 as the fir first coefficient, times x to the power n minus 1. So whenever the index is n, 1 more than n is the coefficient, and 1 less than n is the power of x. Make sense? So there's always a difference of 2 between the coefficient and the exponent. That's how it works. And again, x is between negative 1 and 1. So that our sum converges. Okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can evaluate this using the first method first. So suppose I have a different sum that I'm going to call s. And the reason behind that is I want to turn s to my sum. Okay? So let's start with x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth power, dot, 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 so on and so forth, all the way to infinity. Again, this will converge because x is between negative 1 and 1, okay? Obviously, I don't want x to be 0 for certain reasons. Uh, you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. But I think even if x is 0, is that going to work? Probably not. So let's just say x should not be 0. So he, I want to differentiate this expression. When I differentiate s, I get from the derivative of x squared 2x, and then 3x squared, and then 4x cubed. You might be asking, like, what does this have to do with our sum? But take a look at it. When I differentiated s, I got 2x plus 3x squared, and look at the sum we're looking for. It's 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. Do you see the connection? I hope you do, because we're about to divide both sides by x. That's why probably x should not be 0. But if you divide both sides by x, provided that x is not 0, we get 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared plus 5x cubed, so on and so forth. And this is actually the sum we are looking for. Awesome. This means if we take s and differentiate it and divide by x, we'll get the sum we are looking for. But how do you do that, right? So we're going to go ahead and evaluate s first. So what is s? Let's get back to that. So s is x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth. Looks like this is missing some terms, isn't it? So if we had the whole thing, it would look like this. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth dot dot dot. But notice that the first two terms are missing, so I need to subtract them. In other words, from this infinite geometric series, if you subtract 1 plus x as a qu quantity, then you'll end up with s. Make sense? So in other words, this is s. So s can be given as follows. How do you find this sum, the infinite geometric series? There is a formula, right? And that is 1 over 1 minus x. Beautiful. From this, we need to subtract 1 plus x, which is equivalent to minus 1 minus x, right? Great. You can kind of write this in so many different ways, but this is what s is going to look like. But remember what we're supposed to do. To find our sum, we need to differentiate s and divide by x. So those are the two steps we're going to take. If you differentiate this, 1 over 1 minus x, that can be written as 1 minus x to the power of negative 1. And using the power rule, you can differentiate it, and it's going to look like this. 1 over the quantity 1 minus x squared. If you differentiate negative 1, you're going to get a 0 because it's a constant, and the derivative of negative x is just minus 1. So that was easy. We just differentiated s, and we got s prime. Now, to get the sum that we're looking for, which is 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared, dot, dot, dot. Remember, we're supposed to differentiate x, I mean a, s, and then divide by x. But we already differentiated it, so we have s prime. This is s prime. 
Now all we have to do is divide by x. And if you divide this by x, you're going to get 1 over x times 1 minus x quantity squared minus 1 over x. So that should be the answer. But let's simplify this a little bit, shall we? Because when we do the second method, we want to be able to compare our results. So to simplify this, I'm going to make a common denominator. Multiply by 1 minus x squared, top and bottom. That's going to give me 1 minus 1 minus x quantity squared divided by x times the quantity 1 minus x squared. And if you expand it, you're going to get 1 minus 1 plus 2x minus x squared. Don't forget to negate everything inside the parentheses. And then x times 1 minus x quantity squared. And now 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. We can go ahead and factor out x in the numerator, which is nice because we'll be able to simplify the x or divide by it. Right? X cancels out and we end up with this sum. In other words, 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared plus dot 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 is equal to 2 minus x divided by the quantity 1 minus x squared. So that will be the answer and this brings us to the end of the first method, not to the end of the video. So stay around. We're going to look at the second method, okay? And you'll get to decide which method is better. So this time, I'm going to start with a different sum. This is the fun part. I want to start with this sum, the whole thing, the infinite geometric thingy, remember? This is 1 over 1 minus x. I guess what I'm going to, I'm going to do? Differentiate. Differentiation is the key here because when you differentiate, you kind of switch the coefficients or kind of uh, change them, maybe. If you differentiate this, you're going to get 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, so on and so forth. And as you know, this is equivalent to the same thing squared. Great. Now, I want to get 2 plus 3x. So look what this is missing. I need another 1 here to make a 2, and I do need another x to make a 3x, and I do need another x squared to make a 4x squared. In other words, we're going to go ahead and add these two sums. Make sense? If you add these two things, sorry, they're not aligned, but you get the idea, hopefully. 1 plus 1 is 2, x plus 2x is 3x, x squared plus 3x squared is 4x squared, so on and so forth. So the answer would be 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Actually, the idea for this problem came from this particular sum, and then I thought about the first method. So first method was actually supposed to be second, but I switched them around and made the second method first. Anyways, <laughs> could be a little confusing, but that's how I am. And here's the thing. In that sense, I guess we could, we could call this a homemade problem, but that's no big deal. Let's go ahead and simplify, make a common denominator, and guess what you're going to arrive at? The exact same result. But just faster, I think better, but again, it's your opinion that counts. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And if you know of a third method, please let us know. And bye-bye.